Hello, I'm Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in beautiful San Diego, California. It's a beautiful day. Summer's about to begin. And today, we're going to talk about Red Dot Optics, also known as uh, Red Dot Sights or just Red Dots. Um, the reason that I want to talk about these is because we're seeing so much traffic for the Red Dot Sighting concept that, um, uh, you know, I, I felt, well, let's do an overview of, of why you want to go red dot and how you can get from point A to point B. There's a couple different ways to do it. And then uh, eventually, uh, you know, also kind of compare some of the top brands that we carry, and we carry all the top brands, uh, but, um, you know, really kind of just look at it from that bird's eye view. Later on, and some other videos, I'll do individual videos for each and every single one of these red dots that we're going to talk about. But right now, Let's talk about the Red Dot concept and why you would go to Red Dot. And I will tell you this, there's really a very simple answer because it's faster and better than iron sights. All right, that's a bold statement, right? The Red Dot is a faster and better sighting system than the traditional iron sights or three dot sighting system or front post and notch, no matter how you call it. That's old technology. Red Dot is new technology. The advantages are it's quicker, faster, and easier for those of us who are a little older to get an accurate sight picture because of our older eyes. Now, so the older eyes are the fact that you can have, you're having trouble focusing on the front sight. Even if you're a younger guy, the Red Dot is faster. But if you're certainly having any trouble with vision, uh, you have trouble focusing on the front sight because you just can't get that gun far enough away to focus on it. Uh, bottom line is the red dot is one thing you look through. So that's the true advantage. Now the disadvantage is that it is usually or typically battery operated in the sense that uh, it takes power to create the laser that's going to shine into this window. So let's talk about that concept for a second because there's a lot of things to uh, keep in mind. People sometimes think that the red dot projects itself down onto the target, and that's not true. Uh, that's a laser, and we do sell laser light combos and lasers alone. That's a different standard of, uh, of sighting, a different style of sighting. This is a red dot optic, and the concept is that the red dot is generated right here in the base of the sight, and it projects a red dot into this window. And what happens is you are able to, through these adjustment screws, to adjust the position of that red dot in the window to line up with where the bullet lands at a predetermined distance. So you can say, well, I think most of my shooting is going to be at 20 yards, or I think most of my shooting is going to be at 15 yards, or 10 yards, or 50 yards you would sight it in for that particular distance. And then play a little Kentucky windage, either a hold over or a hold under, based upon uh, a shorter or longer distance. All right? But the bottom line is, uh, it's, it's really easy because it's just one dot. So it's not crosshairs or anything like that. You really just have the one dot. And so the concept is that there's a battery that powers a laser, that throws a laser and it projects it up into the glass, and it stops on the glass, doesn't go down, and wherever that laser is, wherever that dot is, that's where the bullet will go once you have it sighted in. It's pretty darn phenomenal and uh, pretty amazingly accurate. I mean, it's just incredible. Now, you're going to find uh, throughout this selection of red dots that the dot size is usually specified, always specified, on the package itself. So as an example, uh, let's pick up this uh, Trijicon because they're a big name. The uh, Trijicon on their label itself will say right here, 3.25 MOA. All right, for you rifle shooters, you understand that MOA stands for minute of angle. Now, for the red dot, what that means, that the 3.25, that the red dot at 100 yards, get that, okay, when you project that red dot at 100 yards, that means that red dot is going to represent 3.25 inches. 
So let's take that one step further and say, well, for pistol, if I bring that in, in closer, okay, it's going to be even smaller. So that 3.25 inch dot at say, uh, let's say 30 yards will represent approximately one inch. Get it? A third of 100 is 30 yards, 33 yards, eh? But uh, let's just say 30 yards will represent approximately 100, uh, excuse me, one inch. So the size of the dot makes a difference based upon the style of shooting you're doing. If you're a combat style USPSA shooter and you want uh, to see a brighter dot, a bigger dot because you need it for your eyes, you want to be, you'll be shooting outside a lot and you want that bigger dot, you may opt to go with the 6 MOA. So that would look kind of like this. If I take this uh, Viper Venom and you look down here, and in there, in a small, fine print, I can bring it up to you. Go focus on it. It says 6MOA. And again, that represents the size of that dot at 100 yards. It's basically 6 inches. However, bring it back to one quarter of that, say 25 yards, and one quarter of 6 is 1.5 inches. Get it? So if I'm shooting, you know, at 25 yards in a pistol competition, uh, that dot represents just 1.5 inches. So MOA is really something you want to really consider because anything closer than that, that dot is actually a smaller, even by the same fraction. Okay, so if I take that dot all the way into 10 yards, okay, then it's basically now one-tenth of that six inches. So it's actually 0.6 inches at 10 yards. Hope you follow all that. But the concept being is the MOA re really dictates the size of the dot that you see. So forget about the 100 yards and forget about all the differences there. If you like a bigger dot, then you would certainly just go with a six or even a 7.5. I haven't seen much bigger than that. There are some 12s out there too. I think Trigicon makes it 12. Uh, but most pistol shooters who are competition guys want a smaller dot because they still want that precise accuracy. A lot of older guys like me will take a bigger dot because it's just brighter. And you know what? At 10 yards, and if we just go with the math I just did, and the, and the dot represents, uh, what is it, uh, 0.6, uh, uh, you know, one-tenth, say, of that, you know, a half an inch, basically. Uh, it's no big deal. You know, I mean, uh, you know, hey, you know, half inch here, half inch there. Now, it would be half that size if it was a three MOA. So, I mean, certainly uh, it's something to consider. But the bottom line is, think about the size of dot you want. And we'll go ahead now and kind of detail all these sites now that we kind of got that out of the way. Because that's one of the things you're going to look at and you're going to see, well, you know, gee, MOA, what does that mean? Well, I hope I described it a little bit. And it means a lot more, too, for rifle shooters, okay? But basically what that is standing, again, is that, you know, that, that's the, the size of the dot at 100 yards. Now, you would use that, you know, say that if you wanted a 6 MOA and you wanted to move over 6 inches, just move the dot over just one, one notch, in a sense, one, one position over. And that would be your Kentucky windage thing. So, again, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Our bottom line is, right now, is that you understand that Smaller dot is 3 MOA, bigger dot is 6 MOA. Why would I choose one? Well, if you want accuracy, precise accuracy, you go with the point, uh, the 3 uh, MOA. You want, you know, uh, faster, you want to be able to see that site faster, you want it to be brighter, you want it to be bigger uh, for your eyes or for whatever reason, you go with the bigger dot. All right, there's several manufacturers that we carry. Uh, I've got six of them represented here. And then we're going to talk about how to actually mount that red dot onto your slide. First of all, let's go through these real quick. The big dog in the whole room here is the Trijicon site. Trijicon has been around for a while. They, in fact, uh, are one of the uh, you know kind of inventors of this concept. Uh, I, I want to say that I'm probably not accurate there, but I, I do know they came on the game really early with uh, uh, their site. It's been around forever. Hasn't changed. It looks like this forever. They do have a new color now. This is an FDE. It's also available in black. Uh, it's cool. I mean, I have to be honest. Uh, Trijicon, it, it works. 
Uh, a lot of people ask a question at the show. They say, gee, you know, when the slide is reciprocating, doesn't that throw the dot off? And the answer is no, because these guys have their act together. They've engineered all the electronics so that it does not move when the gun is recoiling. All right, so keep that in mind. Okay, so uh, the um, red dot optics, uh, nowadays, most of the ones that are from these reputable companies, uh, they're going to last. So there's no questions about the integrity of the product or the uh, longevity of the product. They, they do last. I mean, they, they work well. Trigicon, big name, big price tag, but you cannot go wrong with that. I mean, that is just a great site. And like I said, it's available in many different configurations, about five or six or maybe even eight different varieties of this particular site. Uh, you'll notice underneath here is where their battery gets installed. That's kind of a negative for some people because you have to take the site off the mount to actually change the battery. And I get it. You know, that's no fun. You know, but, you know, bottom line is uh, that, you know, is something they may want to redesign later because you're going to see some of the newer sites have addressed that particular situation. Uh, one in particular here is the Delta Point, another uh, very uh, highly engineered, uh, reputable company is uh, Leopold, made, makes this Delta Point. This thing is awesome. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, look at the wider, uh, well, I guess I'll say window, okay? That's a big wide window. Compare that to the Trigicon. Let me put these both here like that, and you'll get to see what I'm talking about, okay? And if I get my hand straight, then maybe it can make it a little, there you go. And so this is just a bigger window here with this uh, Leopold, and they actually uh, have you know, come to market in a big way. Uh, all of these sites are gonna have holes there. You see the holes in the top, and that's how it's mounted to the uh, mounting mechanism you choose. Uh, Leopold, uh, of course, is a big brand name and site's been around for a long time. Uh, these guys uh, have made a, a top tier product. It is expensive. I think it's even more expensive than the Trigicon, or some of them at least. Uh, but you know what? You know it's going to work. Uh, it's beautiful, and uh, uh, it has some great features to it. One of the things they did do is they put the battery uh, window up here on top. So you don't have to take it off to change the battery. That's you know, very convenient. Another one to look at uh, is Seymour. Now, Seymour has been around forever, okay? I mean, I'm talking since the 80s. Uh, uh, they've got a lot of competition guys you know, who started using these sites. Uh, this is their STS-2. Uh, it's the um, uh, a smaller version, uh, and, and it's you know slimline and very lightweight, uh, very robust. This is a good company. Uh, they're not one of the huge names. Uh, it's Seymour. You know, I mean, that's what they're called, Seymour. This is a six MOA as well. Uh, what I've noticed is a lot of pistol shooters, you know, guys who want to shoot fast and and, and furiously, are going to go to the the six MOA. Uh, most of the rifle guys who are you know shooting 100 yards and out, they're going to go to that smaller dot, the 3 MOA or even the, even a 2.5 if they can find it. So uh, Seymour is another brand name that we carry. I, I tell you what, uh, nothing bad to say. They've got a tray over here uh, that comes out for the battery. So again, you don't have to take it off to replace the battery. Uh, I think I, I failed to mention that all the sites uh, that we're talking about typically have a, an up and down arrow on the side. Up is to turn the brightness up or to turn the, uh, uh, the, the, the laser on, and down is to turn the laser off or to, you know, to dim it a little bit. So up and down, uh, you know, pretty self-explanatious, but uh, just something to point out. Uh, some of these have different features where they'll automatically go off by themselves. Some automatically come on. Uh, there's a lot of neat things that the people have tried to build into theirs to make it a little unique. Uh, but uh, again, the concept is all the same. Uh, one of the other ones I want to show you here is the uh, J Point. This is their uh, uh, micro electronic uh, reflex sight, also known as a red dot. Uh, this thing is tiny and super lightweight. I mean, it is, uh, you know, probably the lightest weight at all. And, um, you know, J Point uh, has been around for a while. They, you know, uh, JP Precision Rifles, uh, you know, uh, these guys, uh, JP Enterprises, uh, you know, have been doing this for a long time. Um, they've got a battery underneath, because you have to take this off to put it back on. There's your two uh, holes right there. Uh, you know, they've done some neat things. They have like a little uh, rear notch built into theirs, which is kind of fun and kind of neat. Uh, none of the other sites have that. Uh, it's a plastic body, uh, and the, the electronics are just tiny. It's amazing what they've done. And these guys are one of the newer players. So uh, they've got a 4 MOA on theirs. 
All right. And, you know, one of the things to uh, remember is, you know, hey, this JP guy, he does great stuff. And so I, I have not had a lot of experience with this, but I've only heard really good things about it. That's why we're carrying it, because we know, you know that he's got some uh, you know, good engineering. He's not going to put out any junk. This thing's going to work. It's going to last uh, for you. Uh, it's a good option if you really want the super lightweight option. Uh, here's two newcomers as well. Uh, newcomers in the red dot field, basically. They've been around for, you know, I mean, just a handful of years. Uh, and um, I really like these a lot. Uh, Vortex is a name that's been around for a long time. Uh, the red dot concept is really just getting fired, so all these companies are kind of getting into it. Uh, they have developed two uh, really high-end uh, red dot optics that I believe are, are awesome. Uh, one is the, um, uh, the Viper, and the other one is the Venom. Uh, uh, they're both by Vortex, and you'll notice here uh, the, there's really some differences. Uh, uh, I've got the uh, Venom over here and the Viper here. Uh, and, um, you know, bottom line is just a, I think you're going to find a little bit wider uh, window on the um, Venom than on the Viper. Not much, but just a little. A little bigger window, yeah. And, um, uh, you know, my initial thought was, well, you know, probably want to put that Venom on a rifle and put the Viper on a... Uh, uh, on a handgun, but I'm seeing traction on both of them. In fact, um, uh, the one thing I like about the Venom is that it's got the uh, battery window on top. So again, you don't have to take the sight off to change a battery. Now, you don't have to change a battery that often. I, I don't, don't let that scare you or, or talk you out of any of these sights. But, a, a, you know, it, just think about, you know, once you get it mounted, do you have, want to unmount it and do it all over again? So, you know, that, maybe that's once a year. But, you know, something to consider. So the Venom is super hot, and this Viper is super hot. They're both, you know, great sights. Venom is going to be a little heavier than the Viper, uh, but, um, you know, really same profile and, um, uh, you know, same company, just a little different uh, look with a little larger window on the Venom. Uh, they're both available in three or six MOAs. And um, I'm going to show you that I've got this uh, Viper mounted on one of my guns here shortly. So... Um, that's kind of a look at some of the sites we, we, we talked about. And I, I do want to say one thing here. Uh, each of these uh, sites, the red dot optics, have the two holes. We talked about that. And these holes are designed to mount it into your particular, uh, uh, what's the word, your particular system, whether you uh, have it onto the frame or in, onto the slide itself, or you have a, a mount or, or you have a, uh, uh, a Picatinny rail system, whatever. Bottom line is, this is how it attaches. Um, the interesting thing about this is that these holes are different for each manufacturer. So, kind of, you know, you have to make sure you know which manufacturer you're going to get before you go through the different mounting systems. So that's really important to keep in mind because they don't match up. So if you were to cut your slide, which we'll talk about here in just a second, for a Vortex, and then you wanted to put a, an RMR on there, well, it's not going to work. So... That said, let's talk about how do you go from here, here's the site, I love this thing, I want to put it on my handgun, to basically here. Here it is mounted. This is that Viper I talked about. This is a Vortex Viper. You can see it's pretty darn awesome. And gun is unloaded, of course. I don't have it turned on yet, but I will turn it on here shortly. Um, it, it just looks great. There you go, get a little light, light, light on that thing. And the cool thing about this particular setup is I've got it co-witnessed with the tall Trigicon suppressor sights. All right, and so I'm able to look through the glass. And in order to do that, I have to cut the slide down so I can set the, slight, the sight down very low. So here it is. This is a slide cut for a red dot optic. And we offer these in our machine shop, which we'll take a look at shortly. So bottom line is, uh, for you to get here, you would send us your slide, or we would build you a separate slide, which we do for a lot of people, by the way, and we would mount the particular red dot and send it back to you ready to go. You just build it up, or we'll have it completely built up for you, and boom, there it goes. So that's one way to mount, and you'll notice that we saved the rear dovetail channel as well as the front so that you can do a co-witness should you desire. Now, why would you do a co-witness? Well, the purist would say, well, what if your battery fails 
then you still have backup sites. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, the other option is, is that um, because you're looking through these sites, kind of what you're traditionally used to, and there's a red dot sitting right on top of it, kind of gives you that extra positive feedback that, wow, I'm right on target, let me squeeze the trigger. So it's, it's kind of a neat thing uh, to uh, have the red dot co-witness with the iron sights. So you may want to think about that as an option. And again, looking through the window here, you can see what I'm talking about. There I can see my traditional sight picture. And let me turn this sight on real quick. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll push the up bar a button. And I should be able to see that. There it is. Okay, it's pretty, not that bright right now. Let me give it a couple more clicks and get it to be a little brighter. There we go. Okay, let's see if I can get, a, get you to see the red dot. Now, you're not going to see the red dot as I would see it. Usually, it comes in there, and it's just a big red dot like that. All right, there it is. Okay, so there's the red dot, and that's kind of the concept. Now, the red dot that I'm seeing uh, because of video and the way this thing works, that's not what you see inside when you look through it here. You actually see a small red dot that's half the size of that guy right there, of the front sight post all right now one of the things i want to tell you about real quick before we go too much further is oftentimes at the show i'll have people actually grab a gun these are guys who shot a lot of handguns and they'll, they'll actually look and they'll look out and they say i don't see the sight i don't see it i don't see it i don't see it and i say well look go ahead and, and just tilt down just a little bit just take your grip and just take it down just a little bit and you'll see it and you know what they go oh there it is now why is that well because the red dot is higher than your traditional iron sights. So there's a little bit of offset there that you have to get used to. So when you come up, you're actually pointing the gun down just a little bit, just so you can see that red dot. If you go to your normal stance and you, you pop that, that, uh, that, that sight out there, you know, the gun is, is up here and the red dot is up here. You can't really see it. So I tell people just, just come up and just come and tilt it down just a little bit. And that's part of getting used to a red dot optic, is learning how to mount it so that the red dot is where you want it to be and it's pre-aligned. So you gotta take a little bit of time uh, to get from your older position of mounting the gun or presenting the gun to the target to your newer now position, which is just slightly down. I mean, I'm talking about just a, it's, it's here to, I mean, here's, here's a normal and I don't necessarily see it and then here, and there it is. I mean, it's here and here, it's like that much. It's, it's just maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch that I've got to just tilt my wrist down a little bit and then I know that the red, sight is, the red dot is right where I want it to be. Okay, so now, uh, getting again from red dot to your particular mount, there's a couple other ways we can go. One we talked about, the, uh, you know, is in reality the best option is to uh, mill the slide down. It's permanent, okay, you can't go back, but it allows the sight to sit lower which also reduces that offset we just talked about. That's why we talked about it. So you don't have to tilt down quite as much because the higher that sight gets up there, the more you have to compensate your grip to bring that barrel, that muzzle down to match up with what that, where that sight's aiming, okay? So that said, uh, the other option to mount to your slide that you can do at home is what we call a dovetail mount or a version of that dovetail mount. So let me show you how that works. I've got three, maybe four options right here. Uh, this is a universal plate. Check this thing out. It's made by Strike. Uh, there are a lot of holes there because these sets of holes marry up to different sites. Imagine that, huh? So uh, they've got them all listed on their box here. And this one, actually, let's see here. It says uh, Dr. Burris Fastfire EOTech Trijicon, and Leopold, Delta Point, and many others. So what's interesting is that the Burris has the same hole pattern as the Vortex uh, sites. So keep that in mind if you're, if you're thinking about a Vortex and you, it says Burris, it'll definitely work. Here's, what, here's what's really cool about this thing. On the back side is the um, dovetail notch and a couple screws there too. So keep that in mind because they are helpful in truing this thing up. So that dovetail notch now will slide right into the rear sight and there you go now you're going to get with this uh, piece 
uh, the ability to tighten these things up so it tightens this up so it doesn't move, as well as tighten this one up here and tighten this one up here, just crank those down. So you're basically forcing the screw down, forcing that up against the dovetail and locking this in place. So that's how you mount that thing. And then, of course, you take your sights. Let's just take these, uh, uh, this uh, Viper here and drop it on. You find the holes, and there they are. And that'll match up. And I don't know if you can see that in there, but uh, let's just see if we can get a little light in there. And you can see how, well, no, you can't. But there are those two holes right there. One, two. It just matches up right like so. And there you go. You see a little bit of silver back there from the... Um, from the uh, slide. So that's the concept. So this is a fairly simple method. And what's really neat about this method is you can always take it back off and throw on your iron sights if you want to. So there's something to think about. Now, there's a couple other variations this you should be aware of. Here's another thing from Strike Industries. Now, this one is very robust. And check this out. Uh, I mean, this thing is, is like a tank. It has a Picatinny rail. Now, all these sites usually have a Picatinny rail adapter, so keep that in mind, okay? But, you know, again, you also keep in mind the Picatinny rail will uh, increase the height of this thing a little bit. So, uh, that first method is there. Okay, here you go. There, I've got that slid in. Same concept, okay? It has a dovetail. So, I slide it in. So, you see the hole back in the back here, and then here's a slide cover plate that goes up into there, and you can see how it actually will marry up and you'll throw one of the screws right through there to anchor this down. So this gives you really just another point of anchor to anchor this Picatinny rail on top of your slide. It's that cool. And that's one other way to get from point A to point B. So so you have a couple options. Uh, of course, Trigicon, you know, they know about this too. And so they do make a uh, their own plate that works for their own particular uh, uh, site. It's heavy. Uh, which is good. It's steel. Uh, this one is, is going to be a tight fit. Uh, you're going to go ahead and, uh, and have to beat this in with a hammer more than likely. And then uh, uh, once you get your sights on it, uh, you're going to see that these two holes are actually going to marry up with the holes up there in their plate. And then you'll come all the way down and you'll actually attach, you basically force it down onto the slide. So those screws will push up and further capture this plate onto the rail. So that's Trigicon's option. And Trigi, you know, is again, that's, that's a big hefty plate. And it's made only for the Trigicon, uh, as you would, you would expect. And there's one other one that's also uh, proprietary, and that's made by uh, Seymour. They've got their own plate for their own site. Uh, it's a little different system, uh, kind of funky, but uh, certainly effective, and uh, basically uh, involves a, um, uh, a dovetail bar it goes in, take these screws out, you put this thing down on top, like so, and I'll bring it out here, and then you put this guy right on top of it, like so, and uh, then it, it snaps into place and you screw your screws down and it actually captures it as well. Not the best one in the world, but uh, certainly another option if you want to do that for the Seymour. Now, again, what we do, uh, I think, is the best way is we actually mill the slide down. Let's go look at our machine shop right now. All right, this is our machine shop. It's here on the premises here in San Diego. Come on, let's go look at it. Now, we do a lot of this work in-house, as you know. And uh, over here, I want to show you some of our, uh, our slides. Uh, this is Brandon, our master machinist. Thank you, Brandon. Here's some slides that we're doing right now for some of our customers. All right, they're out. Uh, they've sent the slides in from uh, you know basically all around the country. Now some of these, uh, in particular, this slide I think right here is one we're cutting for uh, him, and we're going to build it up and send it off. So this is one of our blank slides that we uh, we sell, and we're gonna, we're going to actually mount a, a red dot on it. But you'll see we've got all these, and I've got all these ready to be coming. And here's what we do right here in the back. We're cutting away. So, like I talk, I'm telling you, if you're looking to get your slide cut, get on the phone, get set up, send your slide in, or we'll build a slide for you, and we'll get it done, and uh, Brandon will take good care of you, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to the studio. All right, we're back now to the studio from the machine shop. Hope you can see that we are able to help you get your slide 
from here to here. The key is to know exactly which red dot optic you're going to mount. And it's easy. You can send us your slide, or we can build you one up from scratch uh, here using either one of our uh, GSPC designs. This is our uh, the Viper. Uh, this is our Ranger cut, or no, this is a Pyramid cut. Uh, it depends on which one you want to do. I mean, we've got lots of them. Or we can do a combination of them, or we can just do the Red, Dale, red Dot Optic by itself. Uh, we do a lot of those, and as you've seen right there at the machine shop, they're just all lined up. People send their guns in because, like I said earlier in the very beginning, this is a hot topic, and there's a reason, because it is faster, it is more fun, and you know what, it's a lot easier for those of us with older eyes. That said, there's one other method I want to show you for the actual mounting. We talked about uh, the red dot optic cut, we talked about the different dovetail mounts, and now there's actually another methodology that a lot of people think is better, because it allows you to mount a red dot optic that does not reciprocate or move. And these are basically mounts. Okay, so there's a couple of different versions. You can see what's going on here, all right? This is a Picatinny rail, rail mount here. You can see how it's gonna fit onto uh, your gun like so, and basically allow you to uh, capture this on the gun with the holes and using uh, some special pins that they give you to capture this onto the slide it's, or the, um, uh, the frame itself, and therefore be able to See how these things line up, okay? Uh, be able to have a rail system above the slide. So here's another one, same concept. This goes into the uh, trigger housing pin back here, boom. And this thing's gonna sit up about yay as this pin matches up with the locking block pin. Okay, that's kind of how that works. And there's your ejection port and all that stuff. They're made for special guns in different sizes, so I don't know if I've got the right one. I'm just showing you the concept. Here's the one that's a little easier to co uh, comprehend and to see the, uh, uh, the concept. It slides on the rail down below, and then we'll lock into place with that. And then once you squeeze this shut and you mount your, your uh, Picatinny uh, rail mount on top to, for the site, the site will sit up here. Uh, this is cool because, uh, again, a lot of people think, well, gee, I don't really want that slide moving because i got to track it with my eye. And if the, si if the slide reciprocates without the uh, red dot, I'll have uh, a little better chance to keep my eye on the red dot as the gun is cycling. Uh, makes sense, right? Okay. Uh, these guys thought of everything. Not only do they have this, but they also have a holster that will accommodate this, okay? So this holster, because once you put this on here, you know, it's going to be hard to holster it. So they actually made a holster that actually lines up with this particular deal there. So it's a pretty neat little system. Uh, the only challenge I have with these guys is by the time you actually mount your sight up here and you do that, see the difference in, in height? So let's go this way here. And so now my offset is not, uh, say, an inch, inch and a half, it's two, two and a half inches. So I've got to really set myself uh, able to kind of tilt that gun down just a little further just so I can line that sight up with the point of aim of that laser uh, at these pistol distances, which are typically 10 yards, 15 yards. 20 max for most USPSA competition. Yeah, there's some 50 yard shots, but not many. So that being said, uh, that being said, um, uh, this uh, system is good because again, it offers you the ability to take it off without any kind of interference there. But if you, uh, you know, really want the best of both worlds, it would be the co-witness option, and that's what I think, uh, you know, I think is really the best option. That's why I built this one. This is my uh, compact 80 uh, build with the the new um, textured um, compact frame. And uh, uh, this is a Glock slide we've done in MP3 finish. Uh, I refinished it because once you cut into the metal, you always want to refinish it because it will rust. Even here in Southern California, uh, for those uh, people who try to save uh, a little extra money, you say, no, don't finish it, just leave it cut because you can't really see it because the slide covers it all up. Hey, I get it. I know you want to save the money, but in the long run, no matter what, it's going to rust. And we've had guys come back two or three months later who say, yeah, it's starting to rust. Can you refinish it? So we prefer to cut them, refinish them. You can refinish them in black and gold in uh, this NP3, which I really like, uh, or a variety of other Cerakote finishes that's going to protect the finish or the, uh, the, the integrity of the slide won't rust and also, you know, make it look pretty cool and pretty awesome, which is 
always fun as well. So, you know, the red dot optic, again, if you're thinking about it, uh, it's time because as you start to see when your friends are out there or whoever's out there shooting, they will be a little bit faster, shooting will be a little bit easier, and they will have better scores because that's the way the red dot works. I mean, to be honest, all the top shooters in the open category use red dot optics. I'm letting me go. This is the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop, and we're here to help you get the red dot of your choice and get it mounted exactly the way you want it mounted. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call the guys up there. Uh, you know, we've got six or eight guys on the phone at any one time who understand these concepts, understand, you know, what's best, you know, I mean, and, and can give you some suggestions based upon what you're trying to accomplish. You know, if you, if you, if you don't want to spend the money to do this, there's a lot of other ways to go because these mounts are much less expensive than the red dot cut and you don't have to refinish. So just a couple things to think about. Thanks for watching. See you next time.